name's Herb, Herb Valley, Herbert, but he called me Herb. I'm the president of Chariots of Honor, and I work with these two co-founders. Uh, we established uh, Chariots of Honor in April 2021 out of the love for our military veterans, and we hosted our very first procession at that time for Colonel Johnson, a Tuskegee Airman. And I'm Eric Holland, one of the co-founders <laughs> of <laughs> Chariots of Honor. Uh, Herb and I, uh, we went to high school together at Largo High School in Prince George's County, Maryland. Yeah. Uh, saw each other out there about 30 plus years of yeah. not seeing each other at a Dallas Honor flight. And uh, we connected. And as we connected from there, we formed Chariots of Honor, which is an absolute blessing. Awesome. All right. I'm uh, Thomas Setnor. I also went to high school with these guys. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, no. um, I, I came into the mix through a mutual uh, friend of ours from our uh, local VFW here in Leesburg. Uh, what's that four-digit number again? Um, 1177. That's yes. right. We know it by heart, right? Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, prior Marine and uh, just, uh, you know, our service never stops and that echoes every single day that, that, that we get to uh, accomplish our mission of reaching out to veterans. So it's just ongoing. Simple thought. Yeah. Raw. That yeah. is amazing. Now, can you tell me how, I know I heard a little bit about you guys, but can you tell me how you guys came to come up with the concept, like from your point of view for this? <laughs> that would be great. Whoever um, wants to start. Um, I'll kind of start it off yeah. real quick. So Eric, around... Um, in 2021, probably around end of March, very early April, called me and said, hey, Colonel Johnson's celeb celebrating his birthday. Um, and Eric asked me, so what should we do? We should celebrate his birthday. What do you think we should do? I said, well, maybe do a birthday party. I, I, I really don't know. And then Eric kind of said something. Why don't we do like a procession of some type? And I go, ooh, I like that idea. I don't see too many of them. You know, the processions we see are mostly for veterans that have passed away, but not too many where we actually celebrate the veteran's birthday and their service. So I said, I like that idea. So we kind of like tossed the idea a little bit more and more and decided that day when we talked, we did, yeah. we're going to make it happen. I don't know how, but we're going to use our military experience. And we said, we're going to create an operational order to get us organized. And that's what we did. And a month later, we, um, we hosted it. Now, during the mix of preparing for the procession, this guy, Thomas, yeah, this guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Out of the blue, we get an email from him, uh, introduction from one of our VFW comrades that introduced us virtually. Said, hey, you got to meet Thomas. Thomas is very passionate about a lot of things, especially our veterans. Yes. I want to introduce you to him. And that's how Thomas came involved. And the very first time we met Thomas, was the day we hosted the procession for Colonel Johnson that morning. And that's how we all started. Wow. And one thing led to another, and here we are that years later. I love that. I love that you guys just, like, found each other by, like, chance or a <laughs> friend of a friend or someone, like, reached out. That's pretty amazing. It is. Um, now, can you tell me, each of you, your experience in the military, what you guys did, all that good stuff? <laughs> I'll let you guys start. <laughs> Go for it, Master Guns. You got it. Right. Well, myself, I uh, joined the Marine Corps in 1983, uh, served for 28 years, uh, combat combat veteran, uh, Iraq, uh, one of the Iraq, during Iraq, um, primary MOS aviation operations specialist, had multiple MOSs, uh, <coughs> presidential helicopter squadron at Quantico, Virginia, um, uh, embassy guard, combat water survival instructor, I, 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 air crew. I've done a lot of things. I'm wow. just thankful that I was able to serve my country for 20, 28 Thank you. years. Yeah, amazing. Me? Oh, okay. You're well, up, you're you up, you're you're up, up you're Squiddy. No, all right. right. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, graduate college, joined the Navy, uh, served eight years in the Navy, served in on uh, two ships, the USS El Paso and the USS Charleston. Both are decommissioned ships sitting up there in uh, Philadelphia. Um, also served in the Persian Gulf War, uh, war veteran, I guess you, you can say. And I got out in 94 and had been working for the federal government since then. But since then, I've always had a passion for our military. You know, Thomas had mentioned, service never ends. And so, again, here we are continuing that. So that's what I've been, I've been doing. Wonderful. 
Oh, I guess uh, my, my lineage goes back to World War One, so uh, it, it was bound that I was going into any branch, and I ended up going to the United States Marine Corps. I did uh, five years from 2007 to 2012. Primary MOS was a 5811 as a uh, military policeman. Got put into a unit they were testing out of Lejeune, comprised of military police, but we got to go to different infantry schools. Um, and then when we deployed, I did Iraq in 08. We did uh, convoy security operations all over Al Anbar. Came home from that one. Four months later, got thrown onto another deployment into uh, Iraq, or I'm sorry, Afghanistan. Uh, my team was uh, part of a task force element training Afghan National Police, Uniform Police, um, doing patrols through that area. And then uh, inter intermittent between deployments, I was working as a um, urban terrain instructor, teaching combat operations, as well as uh, Marine Corps martial arts, and then got picked up uh, three days shy of a year from my last deployment, for my last deployment, uh, in Marsh, Afghanistan, doing uh, everything from counter-narcotics, counter-insurgency, and working with the Ministry of Interior over there, um, training up a new Afghan police force, the Afghan local police force. I don't think that any of those really exist anymore, really. <laughs> but, um, yeah. no, uh, got out and did some... Um, government contracting, and uh, just been doing federal law enforcement uh, since I got out, worked as a Pentagon police officer, and that's kind of how I tied in with these guys, was able to get the first flag flown for uh, one of our first honorees, Colonel Carl C. Johnson, and so we were able to get that uh, flag yeah. flown for him, presenting the uh, certificate, and then... Flown at, at the Pentagon. Yeah, yeah flown yeah. at the Pentagon. Oh, wow. Uh, so, and then, and then Herb, uh, I swear, is part vampire, because <laughs> that you asked about the, how this came to be. Her, I think Herb and Eric and I were up till about maybe three or four in the morning yes. uh, the evening after the first procession, and right. it was like, we, we got to call, and we, we got to keep pushing through with this and, and yeah. find something. And so we're going through names, we're going through <clears throat> mottos and everything, and it was like, let's go with Chariots of Valor. Oh, that already exists on, on, yeah. on Facebook. And then it was like, what about Honor? And it just kind of, it came to there, and yeah. it's grown as a beautiful partnership. But first and foremost, uh, you know, I think uh, out of the friendship, we've just become family. So it's yeah, been, true. been really beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, like, impressive, like, all of you, your history yeah. with that. And then coming up with the name, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I sure. was going to ask, like, how you guys came up with that. But it sounds <laughs> like you guys had some ideas. And we're like, no, no. So it just came yeah. down to, like, what about this? Perfect. Let's Google okay, that one doesn't exist. Let's get it. Right. So that is awesome. Um, do you guys have any upcoming events? I know it's always like days. <laughs> I, when I went online, it actually highlighted somebody. This was for the 12th, right? right? right. A, a little bit back. Tell me what you guys did or like what did that entail? So that July 12th, last Friday, we, we participated in the birthday celebration of John Rossman, who turned 100 years old, World War II veteran, served on Utah Beach um, as part of Operation Overlord. We were a participant. Uh, actually, the event was led by the Sons of the American Revolution, the Sergeant Major John Champ of uh, Loudoun County. But them leading it with many other veteran groups, such as Chairs of Honor, mm -hmm. we participated to celebrate the birthday, but also, importantly, recognize that military veteran's service, the most important thing. Well, they're both, but definitely military service. And so we did that. Uh, last Friday over at Ashburn Pines, right here in Ashburn. And did you know there are many World War II veterans in this county that people don't know? And slowly, our World War II veterans are dying. You know, the eldest generation, the greatest generation, right, guys? The greatest generation. The greatest yeah. generation. And so our goal is to um, honor as many World War II veterans because they are the oldest generation. However, we will honor, and we do honor, Korean and Vietnam veterans as well too, but our goal is really to key in on the World War II. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so it was a wonderful event. And you know how wonderful the event is, is when the veteran actually gets to speak yeah. at the end. And he was almost speechless. He was surprised, he was very thankful, and just a loss of words. But you can see how happy he was he, uh, and surprised that he was. The whole family, all the relatives, everybody that participated and attended that event, yeah. it was timeless. It was memorable. And those were the types of things that we, Charity of Honor, do, is to capture those things so that the, the veterans in, is honored and celebrated. Their families are also honored and celebrated. But the community learns about the veteran 
so that their story can be told to current and future generations. So important. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And can you guys give me a little bit of your perspective on how it is to experience something like that and build that, so, the professions? So to, 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 to give a little bit more of what, what Herb was talking about, we, we talk about how our World War II veterans, how they served and they came home and they, they had a massive formation or celebration of victory in Europe, victory in Japan. Um, but in this day and age where you have social media and there's so many, there's not a quite few of them remaining. I think we talked about uh, maybe 200 plus or so World War II veterans that are remaining that uh, served in the uh, European theater or probably overall is that it's very important that we ensure that those communities that have those remaining veterans, that we honor them. More importantly, the honor is for their family because there's times where even the grandchildren that they have or great-grandchildren are not familiar with the story. Mm. And, and we see that when we do the history of it, I'm a U.S. history teacher, so we see when we do the history of it, it's narrated. So the story isn't told. But for us as an organization, creating this organization, the passion that we have is to have the veteran, if he is possible, if he can or she can, tell that story so we can hear that firsthand. But more importantly, when we have the events, the families themselves, when we hear the stories that the veterans have told the families, when we hear the stories of the grandchildren talking about their, their grandfathers or their father or their mom, that you cannot put a price tag on that. And I think uh, all three of us as, as veterans, that's something that we're extremely proud that, that we're doing and offering our community. Wonderful, mm -hmm. I love that. How about you? Yeah, um, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. My, uh, my father's father uh, was a World War II veteran. Uh, actually, he just turned 100 uh, back on May 12th, uh, just, just a little over a month, and, or no, I'm sorry, uh, about two months ago. So we were out there to celebrate that, but then we actually did a procession for him. Nice. Uh, that was actually the last time we saw each other uh, was when he uh, turned about 98, I believe, because we didn't know if 100 was going to come around. Yeah. But yep. those, those guys, they, 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 are, they are the greatest generation. They have sat here and made it into their 80s, 90s, made it to the triple digits. Wow. Uh, you know, and they're, out, they're outliving uh, a lot of us from, from my, my wars and from, from their wars and... Um, you know, there's, there's just something very unique about that to, to sit there and focus on. And like Eric said, to share that um, with it, the really cool thing about these um, instances where we get to go ahead and learn about the veterans is, you know, it's one thing to crack open a book and read about somebody, yeah. but to sit there firsthand, see someone who in, in your eyes and somebody else's eyes, maybe not to the world, but they are a legend. And to get those stories firsthand is, is just amazing. Um, we've had several instances with families that we've gone ahead and communicated with, you know, what information can you give us about your veteran? And, oh, well, he was in the Army, or he was in the Army <laughs> Air Corps or Marines, but <clears throat> what, what did they do? And then, like, well, let me find out. And then all of a sudden it kind of becomes not just a journey of learning for us, but for the families yeah. as well, the children yeah. of these yeah. veterans, wow. you know, who grew up with them, um, were raised by them, didn't know stories. You know, yeah. I didn't know that my father was a POW or that he was a Purple Heart recipient or a Silver Star recipient. Wow. And these aren't small things to no. overlook by any means. Um, or to find out that they were part of a major operation, uh, you know, that was that was impactful to the outcome of the war. And, and to sit there and see just these realizations come over the faces of these family members is just, it's overwhelming for us because, you know, we're getting to experience it firsthand with them while they're experiencing it firsthand wow. and you know to sit there and see complete strangers coming out to celebrate these individuals you know it it's it's like man i, I really hope i hit the uh the <laughs> age mark one day where, where i get celebrated like this too Aww. but i mean it's 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 overwhelming every single time yeah. i mean you know it's the same thing yeah you're, you're honoring a veteran but you're honoring that veteran yeah. and that's what makes it so special because every story is unique so mm -hmm. yeah, and, and then the family so service medals, uh, campaign medals, 
then the family kind of, oh, now I know what that metal, why that mm-hmm. metal is so important. Now I know why that metal is encased, enshrined, and placed up on, on the wall somewhere. And when grandfather looks at it or grandmom looks at it, they stop and they admire it more. So we have the children and the <coughs> grandchildren. Now they're doing a little bit more research on it. And now the pride of, of understanding what that, what that gentleman or that, that woman did is, is uh, shared. Uh, it's shared, yes ma'am. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. And I like what you guys touched on about how it's not just about learning about them, but the family also is learning through that process. So it's like a great double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they're like, wait, I didn't know all this. Why didn't I even just bother to do it? But it's like when we're, like you wanna do the best for your family member when you do this procession for them. But in mm-hmm. the in the process, you get to learn all this stuff that you probably would have never known if you hadn't like asked more family or maybe you connect with another family member just to find that out, right? Bringing families together through that, and then communities. It's, it, I was going to say the that other thing. exactly. Yeah. I was going to say that. Go ahead and say it. Yeah, about the community. So you know, the sharing of the information and you know the stories that the veteran has with the family and the relatives. But the community is enormous. I mean, when we did our first procession with Colonel Johnson, after the procession, his Colonel Johnson's next door neighbor came out, chatted with us, and said, "I had no idea about my neighbor. Oh my god! I'm, I had no idea he was." a military veteran that served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, and I had no idea he was a Tuskegee Airman. Your own neighbor didn't even know. And we got so much feedback on that first procession about, this is wonderful. I, 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 we now have a Tuskegee Airman that we, can, that we know we can honor and celebrate and in the community, and that was just Loudoun County. But our, our goal is to not just share within Loudoun, but it's also to share nationwide, regionwide, worldwide. The story is timeless, memorable, and forever, ever, worldwide. Yeah. And you should have seen our faces at the end of the procession. <laughs> were you all crying? Oh, my goodness. I don't think we cried. No. You're beaming. We were, You're we both were beaming. Happy. You, 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 couldn't, you couldn't pry the grin off their face. Oh, oh. God, the grins. You yeah, need yeah. to film these moments, too, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, yeah. And speaking of that, like, you want it to be more worldwide. I really do think, like, tell me, like, each of your perspectives, too, but like making sure you guys are getting this on camera too, right? So other people who aren't in Loudoun County can see this and find out more information about you guys and maybe inquire about it. Um, do you, I guess you guys like just travel if, so if you are requested somewhere else or how would that work? Yeah, most of our stuff has been local, region wise. Um, our, our longest distance um, event has was in Illinois, mm-hmm. Mascuda, Illinois, which was a wonderful, wonderful long trip, but uh, just so memorable. Well worth it. Well, yeah, worth, well it. worth it. Three worth veterans. Yeah, three World War II yep. veterans. Wow, okay. Um, our goal, and we talk about it all the time, is you know, being able to expand more, you know, carrying on the chariots of honor in other, sa- uh, other states, other regions. It's a slow process, you know, for three, three members and for us. But our goal and our passion is still there to really grow it and share it so that others can do the same in their communities as well too, you know. It's not just Loudoun County. We're here because, you know, we do it here. Yeah. But you know, we gotta share so if other folks can do the same thing through chari- through the branding of Chariots of Honor. Mm-hmm. The stories are got to be told. That that's a bottom line thing that comes out of our, our group. Is sharing those stories. Yeah. I think it's 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 great to sit there and ask somebody to tell you a story, you know, rather than have that person that walks up and says, "Hey, let me tell you something." You know, it's it's again referring to the greatest generation. How many books do you see of guys writing about operations that they did? Mm-hmm. You know, that's that just that wasn't the thing. You went out, you did your job, you came home. It you know <clears throat> today's generation is. I went on a special operations mission to take out a target, and now I've got a book deal on it, and they're going to make a movie. And it's like, okay, so, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of with the greatest generation comes with the birthing of the phrase, the quiet professionals. You know, these guys did what they had to do. They did it. They came home, most of them, and, and, and we're getting the opportunity to learn their stories, to share their stories. Yeah. It's not something that's being pushed or sorry, forced out there or, or, or pushed out 
kind of you monetized. Know, yeah, they're, they're not looking for that. It's, it's oh, you want to learn about me. And, and you know, it's, that's the most beautiful thing is even when we're trying to get these stories, you know, can you expand on that little, I don't want to, I don't want to bore you. And then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> that wasn't boring. That was a <laughs> pinnacle of the story. Like share, sir, please, or share, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and also want to impress on that. We, we haven't, you know, just sit there focusing <clears throat> on the, the male aspect. We, we had Clara Evans, uh, a resident in um, Sterling. And she turned 100 years old, and she, she had some pretty big accomplishments on herself. She was... Yeah, uh, World War II, served in a uh, European campaign, mm -hmm. um, army nurse, and yeah, she was yeah, our She was only, treating Normandy yeah, treating casualties and wounded like, three days after the, camp, or after the storming of the beaches. She was out there taking yeah. care of these guys, and it's the just... The first woman one for you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's... No small feat there. That's oh yeah, and huge. spry as ever. My God, she had on her birthday crown, <laughs> smile ear to yeah. ear, and was just just oh, she was full overjoyed. Of it. it was it was truly beautiful. Um, and and I just want to hit one more thing. You know, we, we talk about community, um, and we we put these events out on social media. You know, hey, come out, help honor this veteran. We had one over in Manassas, uh, Tech Sergeant Hancock. He was U.S. Army Air Corps. He was part of a bomber crew. He was actually a POW uh, in Poland for goodness mm. i want to say the better part of a Months year so a year yeah. um but Bron uh bronze star recipient i think he had a silver star, yeah, silver star. he um purple heart too I think. yeah purple heart wow. uh, after their crew was shot down they were taking his yeah, pow's that's right. that's but right. we, we were setting up for his that was an amazing turnout but yeah. one of the coolest things is while we're orchestrating trying to get everyone organized for the rollout of the procession we had young kids, you know, kids in their teens oh. walking over. What's what's going on here? Because we have World War II vehicles, some, you know, vehicles throughout time uh, that show up for these things. And what's going on? So we're actually honoring a uh, World War II veteran today. And they're like, oh, is this is this like a closed event or... Can like can we can we go get our car? And I'm like, yeah, go get your car, kids. <laughs> so you got these kids running back to the yeah. I yeah. got it. Don't don't quote me on that because now <laughs> now I'm sounding close to my age I don't want to do that I'm still 38 I'm young but no these these kids were running back to their cars and pulling out of their apartment complexes or whatnot like, hey is this we could pull in here like, yeah just hey, calm down but yeah you can get in we'll get you in but I mean it's really cool to see that kind of stuff Absolutely. and then with the community yeah. stuff and getting the word out Herb um you know I, I'll say this anytime you put a camera in front of my face and ask about this Herb Herb is our our heart he, he, he is the brain that doesn't quit or sleep, apparently, because yeah. he will text you at 3 or 4 in the morning. I have a grand idea, guys, and it's like, Herb, I'll talk to you in two hours. But, you know, Herb has done a magnificent job um, of getting Chariots of Honor out there. He has gone out to local businesses, uh, Big Buns, Burgers, uh, Marco's Pizza, uh, and and they actually have sat there and had events uh, in the on certain nights of the month to raise money for Chariots of Honor so that we can continue doing things like the Honor Processions and also some other grand <clears throat> things that Herb does, like volunteering at the USO, bringing <laughs> snacks and energy drinks Aww. for the troops yeah. in transit. This guy's heart and body and mind don't stop. So, so. that's what we do also. You know, Chariots of Honor is our, our definitely our Honor Procession and all that stuff that revolves around that. Right. But when we're not doing that, there's still other work that needs to be done to support our military veterans. And, you know, having... Volu uh, volunteering for the USO, I, I also see the need for, well, they need food and, and drinks, you know, to support our troops who are deploying or who have come back from deployment or who have families, relative, um, immediate family that are, you know, part of that fe veteran's retirement. You know, the USO has been around since World War II, so that tradition continues. So Chairs of Honor aligns with that tradition as well. It's just another piece off the pie of Chairs of Honor portfolio yeah. you know I love we, do, we do a lot yeah we want to do more <laughs> absolutely is there anything you want to add to or no i mean every, everybody's saying we're literally collectively saying almost the same thing and we're giving you we're giving you everything i mean it's, it's like a it's like a gumbo we we, we mm. literally that that's what we're doing and, and 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 there's a lot of compassion in what we do and outside the chariots of honor you know, we each individually are, are giving other things back to our community, more so her. If you, if, if anybody, <laughs> community leaders, 
uh, political leaders, businesses uh, in Loudoun County, in this area, when they hear the word, uh, the term church of honor, they hear this gentleman, this gentleman's name is, <laughs> is basically the forefront of oh. it. So we're, we're trying to, you know, as he moves, we move. And uh, I'm in Yuma, Arizona, so I'm attempting mm-hmm. to get our brand associated with people out in the, in the Yuma, Yuma, Arizona area. Yeah. It's kind of slow, but we're, we're going to get there. Yeah. And the last yeah. thing I'd like to uh, uh, piggyback off what Thomas said, when we have the honor processions and, you know, we talk about the, the young men and women or the, or the children in the neighborhood that show up, it's an absolutely beautiful sight as we watch the vehicles pass by that veteran wherever we have that location. And to see three generations in a vehicle, yeah. yeah, that is reward. Outside of us putting everything together to see the community come by waving the flags, to see people in their vehicles stop, get out of their vehicles and salute that uh, that veteran. Th- that's it. Right. I, I, you, you can't yeah. you can't add, and then watch the veteran's face, and then more importantly watch his family's face oh, yeah. behind him or her. To see how they're honored by a community that that mm. that's it that's that's what we that's our mission that's what we want to accomplish yeah absolutely that's a powerful message yes, there and like I love that they get to be honored in that way right like I also want to ask how that process is like what all does it take to do all of that and do they know at the <laughs> end or is it a surprise for people who are listening they're like Hey, What's that like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah what is that oh, process like, like I said yeah. the brain the process well, you know, the first month that we did the our, we did three processions within three weeks of each other. Uh, the first one, uh, Colonel Johnson, then then we got a call from to do a second one, and we we're like, we were so passionate, let's do it. We didn't have a really uh, a documented, approved plan. We kind of like took what we did with Colonel Johnson and applied it to the second one, mm-hmm. and then the same thing for the third one. That was a lesson learned for all all three of us because we knew that we needed to lock down and get something documented. So the next, the next set of uh, events that we've done, it takes at least a good solid three months because we're coordinating with the family. The veteran is not requesting this. It's normally the family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're working with the family, not the veteran. And, um, and sometimes they're in different places. They're not all in Allen or Virginia. Or, you know, they could be out in Long Island like one of our, our customers, uh, Bob. The Linden family. Bob, the Linden family. Ooh, they are everywhere on the eastern <laughs> seaboard, and they all make it here f- for the events when uh, yeah. when Eli was around. So, so three months. We 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 try to take spend three months to prepare and coordinate, uh, and it it it's good that we do that because it gives the community um, the understanding of oh I got an upcoming event that I need I may or need to participate in versus. Oh, that's this weekend? Oh, oh, I'm already booked, right? So three months at least, um, but we've done it in less. Um, But also, we don't always do processions. Sometimes it's just a mini birthday. You know, we'll partner with uh, Mission Barbecue. We did a Vietnam vet, and we did that within two weeks. You know, we couldn't do a procession. It's just, there was just not enough time to help promote that. Mm -hmm. So the quick one was, we're gonna host a birthday, and we're gonna do it at Mission Barbecue. Oh, and we're going to socialize them. We're going to invite people to come in. Yeah. So it was a win-win. It was good for Mission Barbecue. It was good for the veteran, the family, and Chariots of Honor. You know, so we're, we're always thinking, you know, how can we honor the veteran and make it memorable? But, of course, remember, our, our bread and butter is that honorary procession. Yes. That is Chariots of Honor. Absolutely, yeah. And can you individually, like, maybe tell me, Maybe an experiment, an experience that has stood out to you guys since being in this organization that you would want to share. <laughs> Which one would I talk about? One, okay. one that maybe stands out, and you're just like, I know they're all amazing stories, right? But one that really got to you that you're like, holy moly, like we did that. Like anything you guys oh, want to share? For me, the Moscato. The Mascuda. Mascuda. Mascato? That's, that's, that's a beverage, Mascuda. right? Mascuda. What's Mascuda. on your mind? Right. Mascuda. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's me, man. Be, I mean, because that was the, the logistics behind all of that, you know, from all of us being here in Virginia and then having to do the uh, virtual meetings. Yeah. 
uh, get everybody involved in it, get community, get uh, family, uh, and also all the organizations that are there involved in it, and then us to actually arrive on the scene, and then as we arrive, these three gentlemen, we arrive in a, a city, a community, and all of a sudden we're dictating everything. So for me, I think uh, that was that was a, a, a great event for us. Yeah, and three out. veterans. Okay, yeah, three no, veterans. Not one, so, three. three. So I, I got to say, th this one hits like right here uh, in my heart. Uh, so the event that Eric's talking about was in Mescuta, Illinois. Mescuta is where my uh, my grandfather, Major Joe Setner, U.S. Army Air Corps, and then U.S. Army Air, or I'm sorry, U.S. Air Force. Woo! Yeah. Don't mix yeah. that up. Yeah. Um, like Moscato. No, that's, yeah, Moscato. <laughs> yes. Cheers. So, um, but no, that was actually for uh, my grandfather's 98th birthday. Uh, my grandmother had passed away years back, and so he's just been out there by himself. But um, we wanted to do what we do for him out there. And so we started coordinating with a fellow named Tom Richardson from the uh, uh, was it? VFW. VFW out there. And uh, Tom started uh, publicizing it with the local uh, gazette out there, going out to the local bank, having them putting it up on the uh, little LED oh, sign. Yeah. Uh, he coordinated with Scott Air Force Base, which yeah. is a main hub of transportation for all stuff going in and out of yeah. the nation to uh, <laughs> troops deployed. Um, and then uh, Eric was already residing in Arizona at this time. Herb and I drove out in my car, uh, <laughs> made, it, made it in a day. It wow. Was, it was yeah. a journey. Oh, we pushed. <laughs> um, but the th it was the, wonderful. The, these two gentlemen, my brothers here, uh, made this journey to, to help honor a member of my family. Um, and for my father, uh, who was a colonel in the Air Force, my mother, lieutenant colonel, or I'm sorry, my mother was also a colonel. Sorry, mom. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, it was such a big deal because this, this was this was my family that was being honored. It wasn't something that you don't think about that when you're doing these types of events, when you're doing it for everyone else that it's ever going to be done for you. you yeah. And then, and then when it does, it's just like, wow, like Eric sat there, got on a plane and flew out to <laughs> Illinois for this herb. God bless him. Sat through my Spotify playlist <laughs> for like 14 hours and got lost uh. on the back roads with me. And, 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 you know, to see these, these gentlemen, come into my grandfather's house, shake his hand, give him a hug and, and yeah. sit there and, and know that they're doing this for him. It was just, it was, it was truly a blessing. Um, my, my parents appreciated it. I know my father sat there and was just like, this is absolutely amazing. Um, and, and it's just, it's, it's something I, I, it'll stick with me for the rest of my life. And we, and we still talk about it in my household. Um, but like you said, the community came into it and it's, it went from being just an event for, for my grandfather to the town around the way goes, Hey, we got a, we got a Navy veteran turning 93. Can he get into it? Right. Yeah. Bring him over. Mm -hmm. And then the other town over, Hey, we've got a Marine turning a hundred, nice. yeah. bring him on over. Spread the and, word. You know, yeah. and, and it just kept going. We, we had, um, I think we actually had the national, uh, vice commander, for the VFW to come out there as well wow. and oh, present yeah. these three veterans uh, with the challenge coin. Um, there were proclamations from the state, from the town that were presented. Um, there was a, a group of ladies out in uh, Illinois that do these um, patchwork quilts, all quilts made by hand. Uh, they had a ceremony of draping the quilts over the veterans yeah. and everything. And we had, I mean, it, it was just amazing to see the community come out for that. And I mean, I'm blathering on right now, but like I said, it's my <laughs> grandfather, it's my story, but, but no, you know, that it wouldn't be a story if, if, if the three of us didn't do what we do. And again, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a blessing and, and, and a day to day constant part of the beat of my heart. So you know, I want to say thank you, my brothers. So you are so welcome. welcome. Yeah. yeah. That was, a uh, for me, I think that was. They were all good, all of our course. events. Yeah. But that one, the Mescuda, was just the epitome of all the events because of all, what these guys said, but importantly, what we went through to prepare for that and what the outcome of that was is that it brought us even closer as a team and we knew it also reinforced our mission, yeah. right? And our vision on the things that we want to do for Chariots of Honor. And we needed to do that trip. And so we did, and here we are still. And that trip almost <laughs> resulted in having another 
event, but unfortunately, oh, that that veteran who was cool. a, yeah. a a Medal of Honor recipient. Yes, let's goodness. not forget that. Mm -hmm. um, what happened? Woody. Um, oh my gosh. Herschel Woody. Herschel Woody. Herschel Woody. Woody. Mm -hmm. The so, flamethrower. The flamethrower. So yeah, last <laughs> living Medal of Honor recipient from World War II. Yeah. yeah. We were. Oh my God. Herb and, I, yeah, Herb and I were driving, and we were we were coming through West Virginia, and we sat there well, and kept saying, "We're getting hungry." No, we were hungry. We were hungry, and so we, we were like, looking, and there were all these street signs yeah, like Arby's, go. Taco Bell, and it's just like <laughs> the tummy was saying, "Don't do it." And so we kept driving, and of course, naturally, we're we're driving in the mountains. And we come across a sign that looks like someone hand painted it, and it says, you know, bombshells and burgers. And we're like, yeah. well, let's eat there. So we go off the back road, go down to this little area, yeah. and well, we saw. And, and the thing that was appealing, I think, about it was there was um, like World War II uh, plain nose art of a pinup girl on the sign. So we're like, hey, we definitely got to go eat here. <laughs> and we get down there, and there's a gun range called Bear Arms. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then connected to the gun range is bombshells and burgers. And we're like, I think we have yeah. to go inside and eat now. So <laughs> we took a detour, went inside. The guys start talking to us behind the counter. Herb and I start telling them, you know, oh, we're just passing through, giving them the whole story. The guy's like, you guys are both veterans. And we're like, yeah. He goes, well, check this out. And he points up on the, on the wall, and there's one of these modern handheld flamethrowers you can do with one hand. And we're like, well, that's cool. He's like, yeah, that's actually signed by Herschel Woody Williams. And we're like, <laughs> really? Right. He says, yeah, come on over <laughs> here, actually. You know, oh, Woody my. said, uh, you know, if, 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 uh, if a good vet comes in here to, to bring you over here. So we get to the segue between the restaurant and the gun range. Beautiful combination. I think that should just be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and in this, this little causeway between the two is this... Uh, Mini museum. Uh, yeah, mini museum of everything of uh, Hirsch Williams. Wow. And there's all his articles uh, and just photographs. And we're like, this is so cool. Well, the guy goes, I got something for you. So yeah. he goes ahead and he opens up this locked cabinet with all this memorabilia that was that's given. And by the way, uh, Woody lived right around the corner and would come to this place like two or three times a week, apparently, for barbecue. Yeah. And they had a back room <laughs> set up where he could... You know, sit there and just have people come sit with him, anybody that wanted to. Yeah. And the guy pulls out a bag and he says, you know, Woody said to give these to like a vet that's worthy. And we were each given a challenge coin, uh, Woody's Medal of Honor mm -hmm. challenge coin. And we're going, are you kidding me? He I says, yeah, I think oh he'd God. want you to have these. We're like, well, this is so cool. And so I think... Uh, I think we were riding high on that for, I think we're still riding high on that. <laughs> we are. <laughs> and so we were like, wow, this is amazing. So we're like, we need to come back and do a procession for him. Yeah. And so we, um, we did the Mascuta thing and then uh, Herb reached out and I believe it was yeah. uh, Herschel's grandson who was doing his social media. Yeah, the grandson. Yep. And I uh, actually talked with the, um, the BFW Auxiliary that was named, that is named after Herschel Woody. At, in that location right there in, uh, what was it, West Virginia, right? Yep. Western Huntington. West, Huntington, right. Yep. So I called them. I just reached out because we just, we chatted about, we got to do a procession for, for Woody. Yeah. So, okay, well, the only way we'll find out is to call them. So we reached out, called, and I chatted with the, uh, the, the vice president of that VFW auxiliary, and she loved what we offered. They said, nobody's ever done that for Woody, or any veteran in our area. Nice. But for Woody, I said, okay, how, when, when can we meet? So we scheduled the meeting for about a couple weeks later, and that's when we found out Woody um, was in the hospital. He was uh, suffering yeah. from pneumonia or something oh. like that. The following week, right, the following right week. after we started coordinating, he exactly. was in the hospice. Okay. So we were coordinating this with the vice president of the VFW Auxiliary and Woody, his grandson, who does the social media. And then, unfortunately, Week, a couple of weeks or About something week like that, later, yeah. he passed away. So we never got that opportunity. Right. But yeah. importantly, we were so honored. If we never took that side trip That's because we were hungry, yeah. there was a calling. Something was saying, you got to pull out oh, here. That is amazing. You know, so that trip to Mascuta, to and from, was just amazing. Wow. And that's why this is so important to us, all three of us, collectively, 
and you feel the energy that, that we bring to it. So. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I feel the energy just hearing this and like, what are the chances of that happening? And like, you had so many places to eat, but you chose that place yeah. and yeah. that led you to that where they have like a little <laughs> museum, like amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, I could talk to you guys all freaking day. I really could. You guys have some great stories, mm -hmm. but I do have one more question. Sure. If you could leave our audience with a message, it can be in regards to anything um, in your life, in your industry, what would that message be? Whoever wants to go first. You are first. Touch, feel, visit, touch, feel, and share history. Okay, you. We've been going left or right all day, man. We're, we're not jinxing this. Keep it going, man. Right on. Me, as I said in my, my podcast last week, is always remember our military and veterans. And I pose the question to future, current and future generations. If we, never, if we don't have our military, if we never had our military to defend our country, where would we be right now? So just... But always remember our veterans, honor them, and celebrate and share their story so that we will always remember what they've done for this country so that we can, as a country, can prosper and enjoy our freedoms as well, too. Yes. Uh, I would just simply say uh, be of service to others uh, over yourself. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, you got to take care of yourself, but if you got an opportunity, if you've got a talent to share and share it you know um don't take anything for granted um always look for the opportunity to do right but yeah um you know it got ingrained in me at, at 21 in the marine corps that a hey, you know sacrifice you know you may not 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 in the literal sense don't sacrifice yourself <laughs> but but no i mean it, it it is more rewarding to serve others than to serve yourself and in any capacity you know, whether it was during our time in the service or sacrificing time to teach young minds mm -hmm. or travel abroad to come see old friends or <laughs> sacrificing sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm talking to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that's me, you know, yeah. Um, or, you know, uh, I, well, I can't say that I'm teaching young minds, but I'm definitely doing some time away from the family as a cop, so... Mm -hmm. But um, still doing that in service of the community is not for myself. And nothing that any of us do is for ourselves. So mm -hmm. you motivate me. You motivate me. Hoorah. Hoorah. Motivate. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. I really appreciate your time and your stories. And you guys are just amazing. And you guys have a great energy camaraderie going on here. So <laughs> I love Sorry, it. Sorry, I had to Thank break you. character, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely, yeah.